Okay, I'm sorry. This video is way overdue. If you visited an online community for D&D before, you've heard about the scourge of power gamers. Reddit, in particular, hates power gamers. And fair enough, Reddit gotta hate something, and powerful players pose problems in D&D. But all means aside, handling power gamers as a GM isn't just easy, it's actually really fun, but you do need to know how to do it. And that's why we're going on this journey because there are six steps to solving this problem and they get increasingly extreme. Okay, let's do this. We're in court and power gamers are on trial because we need to understand, with our GM hat on, what's the actual problem with power gaming? In most cases, you're gonna hear two main arguments. Number one, power gamers outshine other players. This is by far the most important issue we have to address. d and is only fun if everyone is having fun. If someone feels useless or weak, they're gonna stop engaging. That sucks, they're gonna get bored, and eventually they're just gonna quit. An unbalanced party also makes creating encounters a nightmare. Let's say you have a blade singer on the party with an AC of 28. Do you throw a monster with a plus 17 to hit at the party? Well, that might be a good challenge for them, but it's gonna destroy everyone else. Second argument, power gamers can limit GMs who want to craft certain types of stories. This one's pretty simple. If you want to make a horror campaign, it can be difficult if everyone in the party is unbelievably strong. It's hard to make everyone scared of the vampire Count Strahd if the party can be wiping their butts with his corpse after only one round of combat. Those are the two most common problems, and you've already noticed that one relates to the power gamer in relation to other players, and one relates to the power gamer in relation to the GM. So let's talk solutions. This is the most important thing we're going to talk about today. Every GM should start here because most of the problem with power gamers disappears if your players are roughly equal in strength. Let's take an example. Player 1 is a champion fighter. He attacks twice on his turn and then he's done. Player 2 is a hexblade sorcerer paladin who can quicken cast booming blade as a bonus action and then attack twice more on their turn. All of those attacks have an enhanced crit range, which doubles their smite damage too, and they're attacking using charisma, so they kick ass outside of combat as well. But before you judge that player, let's try a little empathy. They worked towards that character. They invested levels and feats and multi-classes just to get to this build. They're not trying to ruin the game, they're just trying to have fun. And damn it, that build sounds kind of fun. So rather than just banning stuff, let's raise everyone up. And this is an opportunity to get creative Creative and tell a story. Sure, you could just give the champion fighter a plus three weapon, or you could work with them to craft something meaningful. Maybe that character is fighting for the memory of his wife who passed away. Maybe he gets an animated shield that is possessed by the spirit of his past wife. Maybe that shield can cast Summon Celestial once per day. Maybe when he loses control and gives in to vengeance, that shield casts Summon Fiend instead. Suddenly the fighter is kicking ass alongside the paladin with a really simple magic item that they helped create. You've made your world a richer place for you and your players to explore. This is what GMing is all about. This is the design part of the game. And it doesn't have to be an item. It could be a feat or an epic boon or just more resources. You can just give the monk five more key points after weaving it naturally into your story. And now your players are roughly equal, you don't need to worry nearly so much about encounter balance. Your world gets richer, your job gets easier, and you get to play with more interesting monsters. Obviously, this isn't gonna solve every problem, and in fact, it can create new problems. And to solve those problems, we're gonna need a shovel, so let's keep moving. Hello, do you live in a boring country like Wales? Are you ready for adventure? Then visit the Wandering Tavern. The Wandering Tavern is a system agnostic TTRPG setting that works for any game be it Daggerheart, D&D, Pathfinder, or Russian Roulette. It's got over 15 giant battle maps, over 30 new NPCs, over 30 plot hooks, magic items, mysteries, downtown minigames, unique spirit mechanics, and even real life recipes crafted by a master chef. But wait, are you on the ground right now? <laughs> like a buffoon? Like a Welshman? You can do better because the entire setting is in the sky on Zephyrs. 
This expansion brings airships to your game with options to customize, modify, and build your own skyship. They even have a digital vehicle builder where you can create your own dream airship by mixing parts and stations and export it right into your games with cost and game statistics taken care of. Oh yeah, and there's an awesome airship mini too. The ultimate expansion for any game system is out now on Kickstarter. Take your games to the stratosphere. Link below. Context is everything when discussing power gamers. Our paladin build from before is incredibly strong if they're fighting one enemy in melee combat. But in a situation where they're fighting a flying enemy, they're basically equal in power to our champion fighter. In fact, if the fighter is a dexterity based fighter with a bow, they're actually a lot worse. Your Blade Singer Wizard's godly AC is awesome until they fight a ghost who completely bypasses their AC and tries to possess them. Suddenly the wizard with minus three charisma finds out getting ghosted on a date isn't the worst way to get ghosted. Knowing and using these types of monsters that target different saving throws or use movement and resistances to challenge different types of players is essential as a GM to stop a single power gamer dominant the game. Sometimes you don't even need to change your encounters, you just need to change how you deliver them. Lots of combos feel powerful because they burn a ton of resources quickly, but if you put them into a full day of adventuring, they're really not so bad. Like any sorcerer is going to feel powerful if they only have one combat encounter per day. Switching up how you deliver combat isn't going to solve every problem. Some combos are just too powerful, that's why we have this shovel. But anyway, we're nearly there, let's keep going. Whatever the internet might say, it is fine to be good at combat. In fact, that's awesome. It doesn't mean you're terrible at roleplay or that you're ruining the game. If that's what your character is built to do, that's cool. The important question to ask is, are you? the GM creating situations that allow for other types of players to feel awesome as well. A typical rogue is going to fall behind in damage compared to a fighter, just by the core mechanics. It's our job as GMs to make sure that rogue still gets chances to shine. If they stealth past an encounter, and never have to fight at all, we should still give them the XP for beating that encounter. Because they did beat it. They beat it in their own way. So much online chatter about D&D revolves around balancing classes for combat, but combat's only part of the game. And look at that. Here we are. Time to start digging. If you balance your game so it's not all combat, having one more powerful player in battle really doesn't matter. That's just their time to shine, and others can shine in other places. Okay, so I've dug out the hole, and this is where we're going. Because in case you haven't realized, the place we're digging to is hell. Let's do this. Welcome to hell. This is the easiest and for some reason the most controversial solution to the power gamer problem. It's my personal favorite, but it only works if all the players are equal. So follow step one first. If your players are just blitzing through the game, having a great time, slaughtering everything in their path, you can just let them. They're trying to play Doom in D&D, and that's allowed, that's fine. You don't have to overthink this, man. You can just enjoy the carnage, enjoy the pizza, enjoy the company, and laugh as they obliterate devil after demon after Dracolich. You are playing a game with the people you love. Who cares if it's easy? Life's hard enough. Screw it. As long as everyone's having fun, you're doing it right. And damn, you know, playing Doom in D&D, it's a fun way to play the game. The problem with a group of power gamers, a lot of the time, is that they don't mesh with the GM's expectation for the game. But if you listen to your players, if you can tell what they want by the way they build their characters and lean into that skid, that's what makes an amazing GM. But sometimes combos are just too good. They are so good that they make any type of combat pointless. And what do you do then? I think the reason people get so angry about power gamers online is because they threaten something much more important than game balance. They can threaten us socially. Nobody wants to be the guy who has to say to a friend, you can't do the thing that you're enjoying anymore. 
You like the game. You want people to enjoy it. Everyone wants to be the GM who can handle everything with no worries. So power gaming gets demonized because GMs feel uncomfortable, understandably, having to confront a player about something they can't handle. But that's not your fault. That's the game's fault, right? And that discussion you need to have to ban a combo isn't so bad, really. Let let's take a look at an example of how to do it. Let's ban a combo. Hey dude, that infinite wizard combo is crazy! You basically found a loop that gives you unlimited wish spells. Yeah, I guess it is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know what else is crazy? Me doing your wife. What? Oh, sorry. I thought because you were f***ing my game, it would be fine for me to f*** your wife. You piece of s***! That's the wrong way to ban a combo. Let's look at the right way. Yeah, I guess it is kind of crazy. <laughs> well, it's basically the end of the game. You can do anything now. So do you want to retire this character and live happily ever after, which is cool, or do you want to work together to find a way to progress the narrative, even if it does mean limiting the power of that combo? Oh, I, I definitely want to keep playing this character. Okay, so, so how about Asmodeus, Lord of the Nine Hells, offers you a deal. He'll give you anything you want in exchange for taking away your ability to cast Simulacrum. Yeah, well, what if he offers like a gem that opens a portal to the abyss where we can go and we can go and fight demons on behalf of hell? Awesome! I, I'm down. Uh, don't tell the rest of the party, but expect an appearance from Asmodeus soon. Nice. Yeah. Also, I've been doing your wife, and that's how it's done. The important part here is giving agency to the player and explaining why you're shutting something down. Make the player part of the process, have a laugh, acknowledge the combo's value, and then work together on a solution. That experience is going to be one that your player is telling their friends for years. I once made a combo so powerful that Satan himself had to come along and stop me. GM intervention can be part of the story itself. The combo in that example was the infinite wizard combo, which is probably the strongest combo in D&D, but you can use this technique for any power build that is causing problems in your game. Now, of course, all of these solutions assume that the players are acting in good faith, that the player isn't actively trying to ruin your game by bringing a ridiculous build. In very, very rare cases, that might not be true. Maybe a player is just trying to disrupt the game, but in that case, it's nothing to do with the combo, that's just someone being a jerk. And even if D&D was a perfectly balanced game, that person would still just be a jerk. However, those types of people are incredibly rare. I've GM'd for thousands of people across the entire world, and I've never even met one. These solutions are going to sort the issue 99.9% .9 of the time. And speaking of sorting the issue, the latest issue of the DM Secret Weapon is out now on Patreon. It has an all-new wizard subclass, the Petrification Wizard, and if you support on Patreon today, you get access to four full magazines instantly. That's around 200 pages of adventures, subclasses, new races, new feats, new rules expansions, all ready to go immediately. The link to that is in the bio, and it really supports the channel. Also, remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.